Good day fellow investors, today we're going to talk about stock market valuation. In a recent video about Facebook, I made a simple model for analyzing Facebook stock and giving it a value. And there are very complex models as we will analyze from Professor De Modern. So the topics for today are stock market valuation and input parameters, complex or common sense, stock valuation formulas, methods of stock valuation, equity risk premium, and how to do stock valuation properly to get good investing returns, not academic titles of grades. To quote Warren Buffett, there is so much that's false and nutty in modern investing practice and modern investment banking that if you just reduce the nonsense, that's a goal you should reasonably hope for just reducing the nonsense. So what is stock valuation? For example, I recently analyzed Facebook stock and my earnings models looks like this. The parameters used are the growth rate, the discount rate, that is my required return rate, not something the market tells me to use, a price to earnings ratio of 10 for the terminal value, which all lead to one present value that I compare to the stock. You can see more about that in the Facebook video. All other factors are qualitative and not quantitative, where I have to estimate their future growth based on their management, based on their intentions, based on their short-term, long-term objectives, monetization, whatever. And I don't believe anyone can put those into numbers, all those qualitative factors. It's funny to compare my model with Professor Damodaran's model from the Stern School of Business at the New York University. This is 50% of the first Excel sheet of Professor Damodaran's page. There are inputs, 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 discussions, and then we come to some very important inputs that consider market numbers. That is the risk-free rate and the initial cost of capital. So all normal things, and then something you use from the market where the market tells you what is the real value. We'll discuss later a bit more about the initial cost of capital, but let's quote Munger. Some of the worst business decisions I've seen came with detailed analysis. The higher math was false precision. They do that in business schools because they've got to do something. So we can listen to Munger or academics. Stock valuation formulas can be simple or complex. Let's go to the initial cost of capital. If you don't know what your firm's cost of capital is, you can compute it in a sheet like the following from Professor Damodaran, of course. This shows you more in detail what is required. So you have unlevered beta or beta, risk-free rate, equity risk premium used in the cost of equity. So all things risk-free rate from the market equity risk premium, depending where, what's the market you analyze, depending what the risk free on what market, etc., etc. So a lot of complexities, a lot of things that really don't have so much in relation to the business you might be analyzing. So you're basing your investment decision on the risk free rate. Okay. But then also on the beta coefficient, past equity premiums, and here is where academics and practitioners strongly disagree. To quote Munger again, using a stock's volatility as a measure of risk is nuts. So on the methods of stock valuation, I always like to use a sim simple example of Luigi who has a restaurant in Venice. Does he care about the risk-free rate? Does he care about the equity premium? Does he care about the volatility of the prices of his restaurant? No. He just cares about how many tourists will come there, how to improve his service, how to grow. It's his family restaurant. He's not, he does not care about selling. He looks at how to get better waiters for a little bit less money and how to improve his margin so that the cash he takes home at the end of the year is bigger. That's common sense business. So he is smart and I think a Luigi guy like that who developed a great restaurant in Venice who is full from lunch till dinner all time, that's a great business and that's a great business person. That's something you want to invest in. On the other hand, you have academics who would tell Luigi to sell the restaurant 20 years ago, then invest it in somewhere else, then lose money and that, etc., etc. So I prefer the common sense business attitude. And that is exactly what has helped me extremely well in the past. 
in place of academics, numbers, complex maths that all looks very nice, all make you look very, very smart. Even my PhD title makes me look smart, but that's not from where the value of my investing comes. I hope so. So to quote Munger, in the real world, you uncover an opportunity and then you compare other opportunities with that. And you only invest in the most attractive opportunities. That's your opportunity cost. That's what you learn in freshman economics. The game hasn't changed at all. That's why modern portfolio theory is so asinine. So you compare different investments and you buy the best investments. If the risk premium, equity risk premium is higher, the risk free rate is higher somewhere else, but the business is better and it's better than the other business with a lower return for the long term, you buy that one. Some businesses are not related to the government risk, to whatever, but are somewhere and that's why they are cheaper. Russian businesses are much cheaper than US businesses on an average. So that's something you have to see how f and then fit it in a portfolio, but using common sense. So to finish with the cost of capital, a lot of people, 90% of people invest like academics because 99% of people go to schools, pay, I don't know, a quarter of a million for that Ivy school education, get a job where all their colleagues do the same analysis, think the same way, and then you are forced to think the same way. If you think differently, and let's say you underperform the market in a year, you're fired, it's over. So it's very few are those who stay independent. There is Buffett, there is Klarman, there is Dalio, and that's it. So very few, and then a few little smaller players, but that's it. And if they get into trouble, like we have seen Ekman get into trouble lately, they lose a lot of their money, the invested funds, because everybody is chasing everybody else, like in herd mentality. Check the Ekman video for more about that. Munger, I've never heard an intelligent discussion on cost of capital. Also on the beta coefficient, Facebook stock recently dropped, what was it, 10% from 2 something to 170. If you put it in a model, the beta got bigger because the volatility is bigger and thus the Facebook stock is riskier. However, I think buying Facebook at 218, what, which was the top, is much riskier than buying Facebook at 170. If it drops to 120, then it's even less risk to buy Facebook because risk is a function of price, not volatility. So that's a big difference between academics and practitioners. On the equity risk premium, according to academics, risk is the standard deviation of a security's price over a number of periods. Again, beta coefficient, standard deviation. However, others say things differently. Risk is not knowing what you're doing, Buffett. Risk is looking for what you don't know, Dalio. Risk is calculating what is the max permanent capital loss possible, Klarman. Risk is not short-term volatility, Munger. So on stock market valuation, as would again Munger say, we don't give a damn about lumpy results. Everyone else is trying to please Wall Street. Lumpy meaning standard deviation and volatility. This is not a small advantage. So lumpy results, yes, big advantage. And then long-term, the risk-free rate, the equity premium, the beta coefficient will change in the long-term. And if you can see how those things change in the long-term, that's your second advantage, how to destroy the market over the long term. Yes, I said it, destroy the market. So how to do proper stock valuation? The key things to watch are price earnings ratios, long term CAPE ratios, earnings growth, fundamentals, book value, the quality of the business, have your own discount rate if you must have a discount rate, simply use what is your required rate of return for comparisons, Compare, compare investments and invest in the best handful. The more investments you compare, 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 the better investments you will find because there are great investments out there. Things can go wrong, think what can go wrong and keep it simple. And then we come to the conclusion, academics cannot beat the market because they are the market, everybody uses the same formula, everybody chasing the same things and then everybody has the same result minus the fees and they don't beat the market. All the guys that we mentioned, Munger, Klarman, Dalio and Buffett have been beating the market for 28, 30, 60, 70, 50, 50 something years. Soros has destroyed the market and all the, a lot of those players really 
beaten the market by just doing, applying value investing, sound principles, mostly common sense principles to investing. So, okay, use those formulas, use everything that you have learned at school, but first apply common sense and reduce the nonsense. I have a PhD, so I can say these things. I'm a practitioner, I'm really getting further and further away from academics. I started my PhD, I knew what I wanted to prove, I just had to prove it in an academic way, did that. The beta coefficient on my stock market explained 5% of stock market changes, stock market price changes, fundamentals explained 36% over a three year period. So fundamentals have again destroyed the beta coefficient and 5% explanations is what got them the Nobel prizes, but that's a different story. So if you want more research, stock market research with common sense, please check my stock market platform. That's all that I do. Research, 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 compare, compare, find the best handful of investments for long-term investing success with common sense and reducing the nonsense. I'll finish with Munger. I have a name for people who went to the extreme efficient market theory, which is bonkers. It was an intellectual consistent theory that enabled them to do pretty mathematics. So I understand its seductiveness to people with large mathematical gifts. It just had a difficulty in that the fundamental assumption did not tie properly to reality. Thank you for watching, looking forward to your comments. I know the academics are going to dislike the video. If you are a practitioner, like the video and I'll see you in the next video.